Lincolnshire Aviation Heritage Centre. Oh, Families yes. enjoying a, quite a noisy night, but it looks <laughs> right, in an Avro Lancaster bomber. How cool is that? That does look good. That does look good. Uh, and if you are in Lincolnshire, uh, you might want to keep a lookout because a very special fly pass is happening right now, apparently. <laughs> and talking of the Second World War, some of the big operational decisions made by Winston Churchill at that time came from a secret government building known now as the Churchill War Rooms. Uh, it was kept so under wraps that very little is known about the people that worked there, but some recently discovered letters have given us a special glimpse into what life was like at that time, as Joe Crowley discovered. My dearest Ron, well at last VE Day has come, but during all the celebrations I couldn't help wondering all the time how you and all the other men who made it possible were spending the day. The only place in London to be was Whitehall, and so it was. I wouldn't have been anywhere else for anything in the world. During the Second World War, basement offices here in Whitehall formed a top secret complex at the centre of Britain's war efforts. Known as the Cabinet War Rooms, they were occupied by the Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, military strategists, MPs, and a hard-working staff who kept this place running 24 hours a day. Because of the secretive nature of this place, no definitive record of those employed here exists. But what's recently been uncovered is some personal correspondence from a female member of staff known as Peggy, written to her fiancé serving overseas. Everybody is out at lunch. The weather is so beautiful, it seems terrible having to work at all, especially in our dungeon. For curator Kate Clements, this unique collection of letters gives new insight into what it was like to work here such a crucial time. These important men who were running the war were here, but also worked here were a lot of women, a lot of civilian women as well. I'm trying to find out what their roles were, who they were, where they worked, what they did. But because it was secret, we don't have many written records, so finding new information is really, really special when we do it. After his mother Peggy passed away, Steve Gibson discovered the letters she wrote while working here. Steve, when did you realise the significance of your mum's letters? Well, I didn't really know about them. Well, obviously, I knew what her work was, uh -huh. and she was clerk for the deception committee, and then later on for other things as well. Few people in history get that kind of glimpse of the inner workings. No, but there was no big song and dance about it. And I think that was the case for a lot of people who worked here, actually. They signed yeah. the Official Secrets Act. They were not supposed to talk to people about it, so the fact yeah. that she kept it secret for so many years is probably yeah. not a coincidence. One particular letter reveals her role in top-secret meetings about weapons of mass destruction. The atom bomb. I think it's frightful, and it terrifies me to think of future wars. I used to keep the papers for the Tube Alloys Committee. I was the committee clerk. Its work was supposed to be so dreadfully secret, and I thought it died a natural death until a fortnight ago. The Tube Alloys Committee was just a copper name for Britain's group that was working on developing its own atomic bomb earlier in the war. That reference itself is interesting because all of the letters that people wrote were censored. And the fact it went through the censor was because no one knew what it meant. Because exactly. it was top secret. Yeah. Peggy's letters only survived because they were kept by her fiancé, Ron, while he was away fighting the war. Today, curator Simon Offord is thankful for the insights their love story provides. Her first letter is actually in May 1944. They met at a dance, but just as things were starting to progress, he just suddenly disappeared. Since you seem to have disappeared off the map since it's Wednesday I evening, I feel it is high time I write to you to find out what has become of you. Now, he, like all the young men, went whisked away to camps around southern England in preparation for D-Day. What sort of little key details do we get from her correspondence that we might not get from other places? You get to see the personal aspect. She talks about being at the heart of things. It just so happened that she was in the office on VE Day. And she says, well, this was a sight I'll never forget. I returned to work and shortly afterwards he appeared again like the proverbial rabbit. <laughs> yeah. By this time I was beginning to get a bit blasé and tired of seeing the PM. Mm. So when Colonel Norman informed me that he would be coming along our corridor, I felt I wouldn't really put myself out, but I did. She gives us a glimpse of another celebration. She's not quite as positive, is she? 
by the time it got to VJ Day, she says, most people I know didn't feel a bit like celebrating. You can't go on having victory days, it gets a bit monotonous. <laughs> That's why we like collections like these. It tells you what the thoughts were at the time. These letters are full of character. She's a young woman, but she's clearly so independent. Was that how she was? How do you remember her? She was very sharp, even up to the virtually the day she died. And Steve, to think this is now part of the National Archive, that's quite special. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Look, darling, this is only half a letter, but I'd like it to catch the last post today, as at the moment I'm rather rushed. So till then, I'll say cheerio and send my fondest love. Peggy. Isn't that just the most those letters they to married Ron so Ron was Steve's dad so now Steve has got the story of yeah. their relationship this amazing bit of history which now belongs to all of us there it is in the museum something about a letter when you see it like that I mean now it's just not going to be the same is it oh, I've got my mum and dad's love letters to oh, each yeah. other and they're, they're both gone yeah. that means a huge amount to me it's a yeah. very special thing yeah, to have